right. I, I guess I'll start by saying that's actually Stephen Ronin. I'm Norwegian in ancestry, and after this meeting, I'm going to go to my ancestral village, Oakdal, in Norway for the, for the first time. So uh, it's great to be back in Scandinavia. Um, let's see here. It's interesting that I was, I didn't know it, working on a planetary boundary variable uh, before knowing anything about Johan's work. And I, I started this after the IGBP executive meeting back in March, I guess, of thinking whether biospheric terrestrial productivity might be a boundary that we're reaching. And I started this effort actually by uh, reading a, a paper that's just been out a year ago by Graham Turner that revisited the limits to growth, that, which was the original planetary boundary paper as far as I'm concerned. And, um, and of course, that was a, a trivial model run on a computer, you know, about as powerful as your watch uh, back in the 1970s. And yet, look at what they found. They suggested that somewhere in the early decades of the 21st century, we may hit some very fundamental limits of the planet. And they came up with this in 1970. And so I was intrigued by revisiting this concept, uh, particularly from my, my discipline of terrestrial productivity, to see if there actually is any evidence now that we may be approaching the kind of uh, limits that uh, their modeling back then uh, postulated. And of course, when you think about terrestrial productivity, one of the drivers that is haunting the back of our minds uh, always is that we've got six and a half billion people now. By 2050, we're going to have 40% more people on the planet. And so the first fundamental question is, can we even feed all those people and uh, house them and uh, provide them with any kind of a quality life? And so I uh, started into my thought process on this of just uh, saying, well, does it appear like we can increase terrestrial productivity by 40% in the next uh, 40 years to simply match the, the population growth rate? So I was trying to keep a clean, simple sort of hypothesis on this. And of course, when you start looking at increasing vegetation production from some sort of natural state, you, you basically end up with these three options. You engage more land in your production. You irrigate or fertilize that land to improve uh, the growth of whatever's on there. And you might change the species and by genetic improvements or taking natural vegetation and, and putting in crops, things like that. And so I, I tried to aim for those three uh, sub-processes of my uh, productivity and see if I find evidence of where we're at. And so this is, uh, in 15 minutes, you get one slide on each topic virtually of kind of my concluding thought of where we're at. And so in terms of land area, obviously in total land area we're not increasing, but it seems like in uh, arable land under production, uh, there's a lot of evidence that 20 or even 30 years ago on a global level, we, um, we peaked in agricultural area. Certainly in terms of irrigated land area um, from Lester Brown's Plan B, uh, the irrigated area per capita has uh, plateaued decades ago. And so at least from this sort of evidence, it doesn't seem like we can engage any dramatic amount of new area. Um, how about genetic improvements? Uh, I, an, an analysis by Mark Howden in Australia uh, looking at genetic improvements 
you know, yield increases, I think this was for wheat, yeah, is showing a steady decline in the in, in increase in yield that is generated by genetic improvements. And he did a more complete paper on a, vi a variety of other crops showing that uh, yields are still increasing, but that uh, increase is definitely uh, slowing down. Uh, a new paper put together population trends, yield trends, and climate change trends to uh, a simulation of per capita agricultural production trends uh, for the world. This paper just came out a couple of months ago, and they find a 14% per capita reduction by 2030 in uh, agricultural production per capita, uh, putting those uh, variables together. So clearly suggesting from their work that it doesn't appear like we're going to get a 40% enhancement uh, looking down uh, this road. Uh, we've already heard a couple of comments on uh, the nitrogen loading of the atmosphere, and it's interesting that, uh, or of the, of the biosphere as a whole, that this is one of Johan's uh, um, boundary points uh, is considered to be exceeded. Uh, these sort of deposition rates of the 40 to 60 kilograms per hectare per year are two orders of magnitude beyond the background rates of typical nitrogen deposition. And so when I start imagining increased fertilizer use uh, to help us with our biospheric productivity, that doesn't seem like a good avenue uh, to work on. Uh, future phosphorus is uh, the secondary uh, fertilizer input, and I can't claim to know much about global phosphorus, but uh, my friends that do sent me some of these papers that set, suggest uh, in a couple of different ways that phosphorus, which is mined from, from rock, is uh, very possibly reaching a peak phosphorus curve. And so that uh, there doesn't, from a pure supply point of view, seem to be a lot of um, uh, options for enthusiasm on phosphorus availability. And then there's water, which we've already talked about a bit. And of course, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment uh, four or five years ago came to the conclusion that a good third of our irrigation withdrawals are beyond sustainable rates uh, around the world. Uh, something like a quarter of our major rivers don't even reach the ocean anymore because they're irrigated right down to the point like they're dry. The Colorado River in the U.S., the Rio Grande River in the U.S., neither of them reach the ocean anymore. Well, what's interesting, a paper in Nature just about three weeks ago using the GRACE satellite uh, data set is now showing that we can look at groundwater depletion. And this, for example, is the depletion rate for uh, northern India and certainly suggests we're not going to be able to expect dramatic new increases in productivity when the productivity we currently have is not even sustainable. 